In this section, we'll discuss event relations. Specifically, we'll address the addition rule for unions, conditional probability, and the concept of independence. Recall that the probability that A or B will occur is the probability of A union B. The additions rule for union says that the probability of A union B is equal to the probability of A plus the probability of B minus the probability of A intersect B. Two events are said to be mutually exclusive if the events have no sample points in common. Specifically, they are considered mutually exclusive if it is impossible that both events can occur at the same time. Let's revisit example three. For this example, we had a game where we drew a card from a standard stack of 52 cards. We defined E as the event that we draw an ace, and F is the event that we draw a diamond card. Here, we specify all of the sample points that are in E, and we compute it that the probability of E is equal to 4 over 52. Here we have all of the sample points that are contained in the event F and the probability of the event F occurring is 13 over 52. Let's compute the probability of E union F or the probability that we draw an ace or a diamond card using the addition rule. We computed this directly on a previous slide. Using the addition rule, the probability of E union F is equal to the probability of E plus the probability of F minus the probability of E intersect F. The probability of E is 4 divided by 52, plus the probability of F, which is 13 divided by 52, minus the intersection of E and F, which only contains one sample point, which is the ace of diamond. So that probability is 1 over 52. Therefore, the probability of E union F is equal to 16 over 32. Let's explore another example. A magazine recently surveyed its readers and found that 68% report that they own a Visa credit card, 77% own a MasterCard, and 55% own both. What percentage of their readers own a Visa or MasterCard? In order to compute this percentage, we must compute the probability that they own a Visa union a MasterCard, which is equal to the probability that they own a Visa plus the probability that they own a MasterCard minus the probability that they own both or Visa intersect MasterCard. Since 68% of their readers own a Visa, the probability of them owning a Visa is 0.68. 77% own a MasterCard. Therefore, the probability that they own a MasterCard is equal to 0.77. 55% own both, so the probability a Visa intersect MasterCard is equal to 0.55. Therefore, the probability a Visa union MasterCard is equal to the probability of Visa, or 0.68, plus the probability of MasterCard, or 0.77, 
minus the probability of their intersection, which is 0.55, which equals 0.9. So 90% of their readers own a Visa or a MasterCard. Conditional probability. The probability of an event A, given that the event B has occurred, is called the conditional probability of A given B, and it is denoted the probability of A given, which is the straight line, B. The formula for computing this is the probability of A given B is equal to the probability of A intersect B divided by the probability of B. Students often struggle with the concept of conditional probability. So before moving forward with the formula, let's have a general discussion about what a conditional probability really is. Suppose we have a class with 13 boys and 15 girls, which gives us a total of 28 students in the class. And we put the names of students on a piece of paper and put it into a hat. Then we shake up the hat and reach into it and randomly select a name. Let's first consider the probability that we select a male's name. Since there are 13 boys in the class out of the 28 students in the entire class, this probability would be 13 divided by 28. Now let's consider a conditional probability. The probability that we select a male's name given that we only placed female names in the hat. That probability would be zero. A conditional probability in essence reduces the original population down to only elements in the original population that have the characteristics of the given section of the conditional probability. With the example on this slide, the original probability above considered the entire population of 28 students in the class. However, our probability below only considered the population of females in the course, which narrowed that original population down to the only 15 female names in the class. Now let's actually use the formula to compute a conditional probability. Let's revisit example three. In example three, we drew a card from a standard deck of 52 cards. We define C as the event that we draw a face card and D as the event that we draw a red card. We define all the sample points in C and D here. Accordingly, the probability of C is equal to 12 divided by 52 and the probability of D is equal to 26 divided by 52. Now let's compute the probability of C given D, or the probability that we draw a face card given that we draw a red card. Previously, we computed the probability of C intersect D. And the probability of C given D is equal to the probability of C intersect D divided by the probability of D. We previously computed this intersection as 6 over 52, and the probability of D is 26 over 52. Therefore, 6 over 52 divided by 26 over 52 is equal to 6 divided by 26. This conditional probability should make sense. Originally, our population was the standard deck of 52 cards. 
However, this conditional probability limited us to the given section of the probability, which was only red cards in the deck. Since there are 26 red cards in the deck, computing the probability that I draw a face card out of those 26 red cards in the deck would be six since there are six red face cards in the deck divided by the total 26 red cards that are inside of the deck. Let's explore another example with conditional probability. A recent study at a large corporation investigated whether employees visited social media websites during their work day. Results of their poll are presented below. In this table we see out of the 60 men that were surveyed, 40 of them did visit a social media website and 20 did not. Out of the 40 women that were surveyed or polled, 36 of them visited a social media website and 4 did not. Let's compute the probability that a person visits a social media website given that they are female. Using the formula, the probability of visiting a social media website given that they are female is equal to the probability that they visit a social media website and they're female divided by the probability that they're female. We obtain this from the formula, the probability of A given B is equal to the probability of A intersect B divided by the probability of B. Our table reveals that the probability of visiting a social media website and being female is 36 out of the total 100 employees or 0.36. The probability of being female is 40 out of the total 100 employees or 0.4. Therefore, the probability of visiting a social media website given that they're female is equal to the intersection, which is 0.36, divided by the probability of being a female, which is 0.4, which equals 0.9. Independence. Two events, A and B, are said to be independent if and only if the probability of A given B is equal to the probability of A or the probability of B given A is equal to the probability of B. For the previous example, is whether a person visits a social media website at this company independent of gender? If so, then the probability that they visit a social media website given that they're female should be equal to the probability that they visit a social media website. Recall from the previous example, the probability that they visit a social media website given that they're female was equal to 0.9. From the table above, we see that the probability that they visit a social media website is equal to 76 out of the total 100 employees, or 0.76. Furthermore, since the probability that they visit a social media website given that they're female is equal to 0.9, and that value is not equal to the probability that they visit a social media website, which is 0.76, we can conclude that these events are not independent.